Hi friends, welcome back to Quiet Time. We're going to read chapter 10 on page 83. The return of me amigo. What does amigo mean? You guys know that Mrs. Bradshaw taught us. What does amigo or amiga mean? Friend. So the return of my friend. Heidi, do you know I really like you? Mrs. Brisbane had kept Heidi in during recess. I was expecting another lecture about raising her hand, and I think Heidi was too. Not really, said Heidi. Well, I do, the teacher told her. You're smart, you're funny, and you're a very good student. I enjoy having you in my class, just like I enjoy having all you guys in my class. Heidi wrinkled her nose. Really? Really, Mrs. Brisbane replied. I realize that I've never told you that, and I've been too busy trying to get you to raise your hand. Og. Are you listening? I called to my neighbor. He splashed in the water gently. He was listening all right. That's a shame, the teacher continued. I wish I didn't have to spend so much time on that, but I worry that your teacher next year might not know what a wonderful student you are the way I do. I'd like you to break that habit before you move on. Would you like to do that? Heidi nodded. I think I've made you very unhappy because you haven't been able to bring Humphrey home with you. Is that correct? Heidi nodded again. Mrs. Brisbane smiled her kindest smile. I think this weekend you should probably take him home, as long as you promise to keep on trying to break that habit. Heidi's smile was as wide as her face. Oh, thank you, she exclaimed, and I will try, I promise. Mrs. Brisbane smiled too. Then it's all settled. Would you like to give Humphrey some fresh water and tidy up his cage? Of course she did. Oh, Humphrey, I can't wait till tomorrow so you can come home with me, Heidi said. I couldn't wait either, but in the meantime, I had a lot to think about. It was Thursday, Aldo's big day, according to his niece. He would pass, would he spa pass his Spanish exam? Would he come to clean room 26 again? They'd been so, there'd been so many surprises in recent days, I was looking forward to things getting back to normal. It turned out I'd have to wait a lot longer for that to happen. I was spinning on my wheel after school when Mr. Morales stopped by the classroom again. Just checking on that contract, Sue, he told Mr. Brisbane. Contract? What was that? Was that what he wanted from her? I stopped spinning and started listening. Mrs. Brisbane sighed and shook her, said, <sighs> shook her head. I haven't been honest with you. I haven't forgotten the contract, but I haven't signed it yet either. Yeek! I thought Mrs. Brisbane not coming back to room 26 was unsqueakable. Oh, I skipped a line. Mr. Morales looked worried. You are coming back next year, aren't you? Eek, the thought of Mrs. Brisbane not coming back to room 26 was unspeakable. I can't imagine not teaching next year, but this is my 13th year of teaching and I qualify for full retirement. Or 30th year. Oh my goodness, friends. I can't read words today. She's been teaching for 30 years. Retirement? I panicked. When you retire, you don't go to work anymore. But you don't have to retire, the principal said. No, it's just, well, Bert. Bert was Mrs. Brisbane's husband and a thoroughly nice human. He's had a rough year now that he's not working and I wanna be there for him, she continued. I guess he had a bad year, all right. He's been in an accident and he was in a wheelchair, but he could go fast, fast, fast in it and he seemed pretty happy. He spent most of his time in his garage making things out of wood. Mr. Morales stood up and started pacing. In fact, he paced right up to the shelf where Og and I live. I understand, he said softly. I just can't imagine Longfellow School without you. Neither can I, Mrs. Brisbane agreed. They were very, very, very quiet, and it was time for me to squeak my mind. Neither can I, I said. And Bert Brisbane is doing just fine. Better than your students would without you. Boing. Boing, Og unexpectedly chimed in. Thanks for your support, Og, I told him. Mr. Morales chuckled. I think your friends, Humphrey and Og, want you to stay. Even Mrs. Brisbane had to smile. Take your time, Sue, the principal said. Just know what side I'm on. He knew, I knew he was on the same side as I was. But I, would our side win? Mr. Morales left then. Then Mrs. Brisbane left. Og and I had plenty of time to think over what we'd heard. I looked out at room 26 at the chalkboard full of math problems and 
and the spring into numbers bulletin board. And I tried to imagine room 26 without Mrs. Brisbane. It was pretty hard to do. Of course, Principal Morales wouldn't let us students stay alone in the classroom. He'd have to bring in another teacher. Suddenly, I could imagine room 26 with another teacher. And it was a pretty picture because the teacher I imagined, but it wasn't a pretty picture because the teacher I imagined was Mrs. Wright. It wilted my whiskers to think of her blowing her whistle at Saya to get her to speak up. Pay attention, Art would be scared silly if he happened to be daydreaming and Mrs. Wright blasted her whistle at him. And my small sensitive ears would be aching by the end of the whole day with Mrs. Wright in charge. Mrs. Brisbane knew how to handle my friends problems without whistles or shouting or being mean. I started to imagine going home with Mrs. Wright on a weekend, but it was too terrible to consider. Then I thought of another possibility. What if Mrs. Brisbane took me to her house forever? As much as I enjoy going to the Brisbane's house, I couldn't stand the thought of not being in a classroom anymore. I couldn't get to, I wouldn't get to finish, I wouldn't get to visit different homes or meet new families on weekends. And who would help the students of room 26 with their problems? I poked my head out of my sleeping hut and loudly squeaked. Og, you and I will have to stop her. Og took out a long, splashy dive into the water of his tank. He had a lot of wonderful ways to agree with me. I was still trying not to think about Mrs. Brisbane when I heard some wheels squeaking down the hall toward room 26. By now, I was pretty sure that no spaceships were landing in the parking lot, but I wasn't at all sure who would be pushing the cleaning cart. The door swung open and the lights came on. Naturally, I couldn't see anything for a few seconds. I held my breath and I waited, but I didn't have to wait long. Buenas noches, senores, a voice boomed out. You are looking at one very happy amigo, an amigo who has a B+. Plus. The voice was definitely Aldo's, but I could I but I still couldn't understand everything he said. I knew he was happy. I knew amigo amigo meant friend, but why did he have to have to have a bee with him? Bees are annoying, noisy insects, and a huge bee plus would be even more annoying. My eyes got used to the light and oh it was wonderful to see Aldo in his usual work clothes, his lovely mustache bobbing up and down above his smiling lips. He waved a paper in the air. I got a B plus on my Spanish exam. He walked right up to my cage and waved the paper at me. Okay, okay, I usually get A's on most of my tests, but this B plus makes me very happy because I thought I might fail. This is the last page of chapter 10. I couldn't imagine Aldo failing at anything, and now I understood that he was talking about a grade, not a busy insect. Congratulations, Aldo, I shouted with unsqueakable happiness. Og bounced up and down like a goofy frog he is. Boing, 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 he twanged. Gracias, amigos, Aldo answered. And then he looked around to room 26. Say, the place looks pretty good. My niece Amy did a fine job. Muy bueno. She did, I agreed. I thought she was a space alien, and I thought she captured you, and I was so, 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 so worried. Aldo laughed heartedly, which made his mustache bounce. I think you missed me, Humphrey, and you know what? I missed you, too. Then Aldo, who has done some very fun things, such as balancing one broom on a finger, did something even funnier. He began to snap his fingers, humming, humming a puppy tune. He lifted his arms above his head and began dancing between the desks, tapping his feet wildly. Go, Aldo, I shouted. Ole, he shouted. Ole, 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 I chimed in. I was so happy to have Aldo back, I forgot that Mrs. Brisbane might not come back at all. At least for a minute, I forgot. The definition at the end of this chapter is contract, a piece of paper that you sign as a promise that you'll do something, like teach school or pay your bills. Signing a contract is a very serious thing, and you should think carefully before you sign one, except for Mrs. Brisbane, who would sign that pop, who who should sign that paper paper without thinking one more second. Humphrey's Dictionary of Wonderful Words. All right, friends, have a great rest. We will read chapter 11 in the next video. I love you guys.